welcome everyone to our VIP meet and greet. My name is Betty Diaz and I'm delighted to introduce today's special guest. So today we have Henry Schuster. He's an award-winning producer for CBS News broadcast 60 Minutes. And then we have Bruce McDonald, senior producer of Paramount Events and Brand Experience. Thank you both for being here. Henry and Bruce, why don't you share, and we'll start with Henry, why don't you share uh, what you do in the company and, you know, what your day-to-day -day looks like? I am a producer at 60 Minutes, which means a lot. It means uh, I do a lot of different things in a day. Today, I am getting ready for a shoot that we're going off to um, later this week to Mozambique. It's something we haven't done in a long time, which is a fun story. Usually when I'm going off on a story, it's like, you know, go to the Polish-Ukrainian border, do this, do that. This is an adventure story. I've got an associate producer. I've got a correspondent we work with and a couple of camera crews. It means doing a lot of calls. It means um, doing a lot of reporting. It means doing a lot of figuring out what our shoot schedule is going to look like because we're about to shoot something that's really like a small movie. My name is Bruce. Like Betty said, I work for the events and brand experience team. My background was in television before I came over to doing live and virtual events. But well, before that, I was born in Plattsburgh, New York, in the shadow of Plattsburgh Air Force Base, which is now decommissioned. But we did have very, very, very loud, large planes uh, casting shadows and disrupting conversations throughout my entire childhood. I am now in Southern Vermont. I have been a remote employee for coming up on two years. So Henry and I both have that in common. And it's great that the company actually has uh, you know, some flexibility for uh, a lot of us to be able to do that. But my day-to-day -day really depends on whatever projects I'm working on. Similar to Henry, I'm sure. Right now, I am in a little bit of a quiet period because we had a an outrageously large event in June for the launch of Paramount Plus in London. And we had like 40 of our uh, network talent uh, come on stage from Sylvester Stallone to Kevin Costner to the Teen Wolf cast uh, hosted by the British comedian Graham Norton. It was an insane amount of work, but it was uh, very rewarding. We're gonna be doing some more of those events in Italy and France and Germany before the end of the year. But right now, uh, today, I have a reasonably light day. Aside from this, my only meeting was with Betty about the Marine birthday celebration that we have for the past couple of years made a special for Pluto TV in uh, collaboration with the New York City Marine Birthday Committee. And we are hopefully going to be doing that again this year, making it uh, the, the best yet, our third go around. I do all sorts of things from consumer facing, partner facing, internal facing. So I have produced many of the episodes of Bob Live. I have done offsites for the ad sales division, the marketing and communications division. I worked with Mrs. Obama on her college signing day event for her last couple of years in the White House and the first year after she was out of the White House. And I do lots and lots of, you know, small training sessions and uh, team meetings for workplace down to you know, travel experiences where they need me to go somewhere and help set up, uh, whether at VidCon or uh, Video Music Awards, which I'm not involved in this year. Uh, so it's a real big mixed bag and some days are really fun and some days are absolutely hellish, but I think that's the case in most careers. And you forgot to mention that your father a Marine. <laughs> oh, yes. I am the son of a Marine uh, and a son of some other things, depending on who you talk to. <laughs> All right. So our next question will be, so what advice would you give someone who's starting their career in media? Henry and then Bruce. It depends on what sort of media you're talking about. We've already heard Bruce and I do different things. All of you guys are in different parts of a very big company that is a media corporation, but media means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. But I think at the heart of it, it goes back to the four words that um, Don Hewitt, who founded 60 Minutes, used to recite. It was his mantra, which was, tell me a story. No matter what 
we're doing, uh, what media we're involved in. We're all in the storytelling business. My storytelling involves journalism, but it also involves you know working for a magazine show. So it's not like doing a nightly news piece. You know, Bruce is doing storytelling with that awesome event that they had in London. That's um, introducing the British public to Paramount Plus. So no matter what you do, you have to you have to view that as, you know, if we're a media company, you have to view being able to be a storyteller as the cornerstone of what you do and what we do. In my case, I think it, you cannot be a good storyteller unless you're a good writer. Now, some people write with words, some people write with pictures, some people write with sound, some people write with a combination of all of those. But every one of those, whether it's telling you a story out loud, the oral tradition, which is the first way of telling the story, it's you've got to be able to tell a story and to tell a story in a way you, you've got to be able to, whichever medium you're working in, you've got to be able to write. And so that's where it begins. So all the rest of it is hard, but if you've got that that core, that storytelling core, then that's the best start you can make. And incidentally, you know, some people were talk about personal brand, personal this, personal that. You know, if you're gonna have a career in media, one of the things you have to do is tell your own story to the people that you that are who are looking to hire you. So that's that. Great advice. And yeah, I'm glad you added that, Henry, because I was going to dovetail with that as part of my overview, which isn't just in media, but I think that anywhere you land, because many of us you know, start in media, go somewhere else, come back to media. There's a lot of talk in you know job uh, programs and career counseling about transferable skills, because the workplace is constantly changing, careers are constantly changing. So uh, you know you might not end up saying in this field, but wherever you go, I think being personal, and that's part of that storytelling, making sure they know who you are, so you stand out as an individual, and getting to know the people you're working with, and then being always personable and professional. It's very easy on a stressful day to get a little cranky and to be a little short with people, but I think you know a, a great thing to master is keeping those reactions in check and understanding that everyone's in the same boat. When you're in a very stressful situation, you all have to work together for the common goal, which is something I don't really have to explain to military veterans. But, you know, to always have that respect for everyone else and uh, understanding that they are probably coming from a very similar space. But then also, especially when you're starting somewhere, to always always be the first to offer help. If you have any downtime, you see that someone is working hard on something and seems a little over stressed, ask them if there is something that you can help them with. That was in my internship what really got me noticed and ended up starting me on this uh, career course was that I was one of 13 interns and a lot of people looked at it as something to, you know, really cool, come to work in Times Square and hang out with a bunch of other people your age in this intern room and wait for someone to come in and ask you to do a task. I was not down for that. I wasn't there to socialize. I was there to begin my career. So I went around to everyone in the MTV News Department constantly saying, is there anything I can help you with? Do you need any errands run? Do you need tapes added to the library? Do you need something screened and logged? And eventually it got to the point where people were coming into that intern room looking for me. If I wasn't there, they would come back because they knew that I was somebody who was interested in actually learning about everything that was going on and assisting wherever I could. So always being helpful, always being personal, personable, and professional. I think no matter what you do in life, those are going to serve you well. Any of the VIPs have questions? Henry. How do you go about picking the topics for 60 Minutes? Is there a particular person that gives it to you or are you guys in the room kind of looking at different things that are going on within the media? Ricky, that's a great question. At 60 Minutes, we like to say you eat what you kill, which uh, nobody gives you anything. You have to come up with stories. You know, our biggest competition is not the other TV shows out there, it's our colleagues. I come up with some, I work with Scott Pelley, Scott comes up with some, sometimes it's between the two of us. 
It's almost never that our boss comes to us and says, would you do this? That's why 60 Minutes has lasted as long as it has done. It has a uh, group of producers and correspondents who are, shall we say, competitive. And, you know, so everybody, you know, you get on the air because uh, you come up with these stories and you get the people to talk. And it's, it, you know, maybe a little Darwinian, but there you go. We're, fit, we're into our 50 50 years. So I guess it's a working system. You're a top 10 broadcast network. So there's something good there amongst drama and comedy. Yeah. <laughs> I was actually going to ask something about, about the storytelling and kind of just maybe if you have just what your strategies are on when you're kind of maybe in that like creative block or you're not telling the story that you had originally set out to or or you're not getting the maybe the the right uh experience out there how do you kind of navigate that with your with your teams and stuff let's go back to the storytell imagine that you were doing something imagine that bruce is doing something imagine that jim is doing something you know you're you're like how would you tell a friend what you're doing how would you tell a friend about that story you just shot? Well, number one, you'd probably tell it in the right order. And number two, you'd probably do it in, you know, in a much simpler way. And I don't mean to say much simpler in terms of you're dumbing it down. There's a part of you that already knows what the story is. And you just have to, you know, you've done a lot of stuff and you're trying to figure out how do you bring all that stuff into it. Just remember anything that Bruce does, anything that I do, anything that all of you do in various different ways. The audience never sees what you cut out. It only sees what you've told them. So that's one thing. But the other is like, how would you tell, you know, how would you tell a friend? How would you tell, you know, how would you tell somebody, uh, you know, when you're seeing a member of your family at Thanksgiving and they say, well, what are you working on? You'd say, well, I'm doing this, this, and this. And it comes right out of your mouth. You sit there at the keyboard, and it's this, 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 and this. So you just got to remember, don't overthink it. To echo a lot of that from my experience making packages for television shows, and uh, I've done a lot of freelance writing for record labels, doing publicity bios and you know write-ups on new records, liner notes. And it's not that, you know, you, you know what you want in the end, you know that the finished product should be between one and two pages or should be between, you know, three and 345. But when you sit down, you can't think of the story as I need to make a first draft that's a three minute and 30 second piece, or I need to make a first draft that is a page, page and a half. You have to make that story fat and then you go through and you trim the fat and you streamline it and you rearrange it maybe to, to take advantage of the economy of words. Uh, and, and that's how you end up boiling it down into the final thing. I think you you get way uh, in the weeds when you try to make a first draft that is the exact length that you're looking for. And, and it's like uh, one of the things that one of my media professors uh, taught us in college was you know, when you're making radio promos, you want a 60, a 30, a 15, and a 10. You don't start by writing the 10 second promo and then fattening it to make a 15 second promo and then fattening it. You there start you with the 60 second and then you pare it down and you take it to the brass tacks to make the shorter and shorter versions. Uh, so I think that, you know, you have to look at the story as one gigantic piece you have to tell the whole story first and then you have to figure out what the the you know kernel of the story is what people are going to be able to follow and how you can convey as much as possible in the time allotted. yeah thank you so much that makes a lot of sense when you kind of break it down like that and also you know seeing what you guys both have worked on and now hearing that process also makes it even more incredible, like the the content that's put out. Uh, a follow-up, on occasion, when you have something that's really fat and you think is really good, you can also take it to your supervisors and say, I'm not, I, I think this is quality enough to make extra time for it. And that happened for me when I had the, the opportunity at MTV News to go to Dave Grohl's house to shoot at the home studio where they were recording the Foo Fighters record, There Is Nothing Left to Lose. Initially, they had said, we want a three-minute package. 
but they didn't know that Dave was going to, you know, jam a few songs there for us, that they were going to let us be a fly on the wall for one of the recording sessions, that we would have a 90 minute sit down interview, that Dave would give a full tour of his entire house and pointing out his awards which are, were all in the bathroom at the time, which was pretty good, including his moon man that he had the toilet paper on the, the moon man's flag. Uh, a moon person, sorry. Uh, it was a moon man then. And I, I said, there's just too much good stuff here. I don't want to leave it all on the floor. And I brought my supervising producer into the edit and he said, oh my God, this, this is amazing. We have to have a meeting. And then the assignment editor and the executive producer we looked at it and we said, well, great. This isn't one segment of the show. This is two segments of the show. So Bruce, you can have six and a half to seven minutes for this. And I was doing backflips because I was so thrilled, not only to be able to share this great footage, but it was sort of a feather in my cap to have two thirds of what was then called the Week in Rock, which was MTV News' half hour uh, weekly wrap up show. Thank you, everybody. And thanks again, Bruce and Henry. You guys are amazing. <laughs>